G'day mates. This is going to be my in-depth weapon tutorial for the Desolation mod, specifically the one that is technically a beta that you get that you get from uh, the Discord page. Desolation 0.2.4.21 Hotfix 8. Some of these points will be relevant for the prior version, the uh, technically I call full release. It's available on ModDB. Right now, I'm just going to go over a few settings before we actually get into this. I need to point these out, and they will be relevant for the rest of the video. Okay? So the very first setting for people, if you're looking for the desolation-specific options that you can turn on and off, go to your settings here. Go to Gameplay, and then Desolation-specific. You're going to find all of your options here. Okay, you can go through and enable, disable magazines, your character body, you've got your cover weapon compression, that's, uh, that's you know, when you're going up against a tree or something, your weapon sort of moves out of the way. Um, your TD models, your inertia type, your horizontal vertical recoils, all those other sorts of settings, the alternate pricing system, and the inertia factor. All of your settings are here. If you install a mod, let's say the base um, dynamic mutants and dynamic nocturnal mutants, it will eliminate this option here. It won't show up. And then you'll just be given whatever the game gives you. So like it'll enable magazines and you can't do anything with it. That's why if you're going to run anything in like that, you want to run the DLTX version of dynamic mutants just for demonstration. So if this option isn't here when you install a mod, it's probably advised to either find a compatibility patch, make one yourself, or use a different mod. But if you go to the Discord, I guarantee you someone's already got an answer. There are a lot of very smart people on that Discord page. I'm not one of them, that's for sure. There's a hell of a lot of very smart people there. Okay? That's the first thing. Now, this other part, it's very relevant for what I'm going to be going over. Okay? So these are my keys in case you want to pause and have a look at how I set up my uh, anomaly desolation or how I play anomaly period. Or anything, dead air, what have you. These are my key settings. You can pause it if you're looking for how you should set yourself up. The main settings that we want to look for are right down the bottom. Attachments, as you can see here. I use an MMO mouse, okay? So I will be referring to the keys that I use via the number, uh, number pad numbers, okay? Now I'm going to briefly go over these for you. Vanilla site and module site. That is on num number pad 6. So when I say 6, that's what I mean. Now what this basically means here, vanilla sites is your base site that's already on the gun. So some guns do come with a base site already. And you could mod to add something on a 45 degree angle to it. That's what it would be referring to. But most other guns, like a standard AK or an M4 or what have you, it's referring to the iron sights. Okay? That's what that means. Your module site or your very first site that's actually attached to the gun. All right? So that's usually your 1X or then your 4X, your 6X, 8X, 24X, what have you. That's the very first site that's on your gun, okay? And this button here, number nine, is the button that switches between your module, modular sites, all right? So I'm going to describe that a little bit more as we get into this, okay? The site adjustment, that's your horizontal and vertical, up and down, left and right on your screen, okay? Your site button depth, that's away from you and towards you. So respectively, that's number seven and number eight. Scope magnification, that's number, number pad five. That needs no introduction. You've got a site that has eight times by 24 times or 12 times. That means that site has two magnification levels that you could switch to. That's what that is, like any other standard game. Activating, deactivating night vision scopes. There's a couple of sites that do have night vision on them. 
one of them being the Malish, Malish site. But if you're going to run DUS or RDAP, they've got other sites in there that also have night vision on them as well. I'm not running those two packs as I am not able to run them effectively and still maintain a stable mod pack. Okay. And that is um, number pad delete on here. But on my MMO mouse, in case you have one, that's number 11. Okay. And then your accessories, I've set that to the Z button. All right. So these are the main ones you need to remember. Six, nine, seven, eight, and five. Okay. Now, let's get into the game. I'm over here in Rostock. And it's still early morning. Let me just change that. And we'll freeze time. All right. Here's Petrenko. He's the guy that usually sells you your guns. And he's going to sell certain parts. I've got a fairly high reputation right now with Judy. So if I go open up his inventory, you're going to find all of these weapons. Now, on a refresh, you're going to see a different sort of icon on here. Let's see if I can find the scope, uh, the binoculars. We should have binoculars here for sale. Um, yes. You're going to see an icon similar to this. You're going to see like a little magnification symbol and just any old random sort of gun, like a handgun. And you'll go over those particular guns and it will reveal what's actually on that gun. As you can see here, the AK-103 doesn't normally come with a forward grip or forward handle, whatever, however you want to call it. Okay, so if you ever come across a reset and you're looking at all the guns thinking, why is that? And then, and then it starts revealing. That's what it's doing. It's like a little mini randomizer. Like this one here automatically comes with a silencer on it. Okay. Now, the other thing that Petranko sells, because he's an equipment dealer, so he's dealing all your, or a gun runner, gun dealer, he will sell your silencers and your scopes with this particular version of the game. The prior version was a little bit all over the show. This one here, there's two specific people to keep an eye out for. Okay. So you can see all of the sites, all of the, all of the um, muzzles, the silences. There will be muzzles in here sometimes too. All right. Let's go over to our second source of parts. Okay, we're over here at our second source of parts, man gun, the technician. If I open up his inventory, you're going to see all of your other parts are here. You'll find your muzzles for the specific guns. You'll find your, your buffer tubes, your stocks, everything. All of the internal components or any other components that need to be upgraded, you're going to find them here. Okay. Now, because I've given Mangun all three upgrade kits, and it is imperative that you do that, you're going to find that you're going to have a lot of these. These are for the maintenance of the weapons. That'll be for a later part of the video. Now, this is the other part of the video. Now, if you remember those settings, I'm just going to quickly bring them up again for you so that you are reminded. Vanilla sites, module site, number six. Switch between modular sites, number nine. Horizontal vertical, number seven. And depth, away from you, towards you, number eight. Okay? So right now I have an AEK in my hands, and I've set up two sites on it. I've got an ACOG, and I've got a Kemper. Okay? The ACOG is the main site. The Kemper is the secondary site. I haven't set these up yet. So if I press the right mouse button, you're going to see this. This is the iron side or where the iron sides would be. Okay. Now, when you first try to get these sides to work, you're going to have to press these two buttons one after the other. Sometimes it could be six, then nine, and it activates. Or other times you might need a six, nine, and then a six again, from what I've noticed so far. I haven't had to go any further than that. Okay. So in this case here, I'm going to press six. Nothing happened. Now I press nine. All right, it's brought down the main site, okay? Now, if I press 6 again, 
it'll go to the iron sights. Press six again, it'll go to the main sight. Okay? Now, if I press nine right now, it's going to switch to the camper sight. Okay, that's a secondary modular sight. Press it again, it'll go back to the ACOG. Now, if I go to the secondary modular sight, the camper, right, with number nine, and now I press number six, it's going to go straight to the iron sights. If I press six again, it's going to go to the secondary modular sight. Okay? All right? Now, what I do for lining up these sights, okay? So we're going to be referring to seven and eight. So horizontal vertical number seven and depth number eight. So for this particular site here, it's um, some guns so that you are aware are not going to work too well with certain sites. Some sites will, um, will work, others will not. So in the case of the ACOG here, you can see where the red is, okay? If I was to fire the gun once, you can see that the shot has landed about the third, third one down. Now I believe it's because in desolation, the ability to set the, um, what is it, the, the yards or something on the site, so you would normally set 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards to the site, is not active. I think if that was to be activated, the sites would be all good, but that's not working right now, okay? So I can't do anything with the site. If I was to press 7, you can now see that I'm moving that site left to right, up and down, okay? It's not really going to do anything. Still ending up in the same spot. Okay. Now, if I was to do number eight, I could move it all the way out, or I could move it all the way in. And in this case, all I'm doing is holding the button and moving the mouse backwards to go so towards me to move it outwards and then outwards away from me to bring the site in. Okay. Since, since that site isn't working, I'm going to show you how I line up my sights. Now I've taken off the ACOG because on this particular gun it won't work too well. But this is going to be relevant for all weapons when you want to try and line them up or get them to work a little bit better. Most of those high level, uh, six times, 25 times, 20, 24, whichever, are going to be pretty well dead set on most weapons. Other guns, it won't be. DOS and um, RDAP mods do have sites on there that do counter that, and I have found a few. Um, but in this case here, I'm only running just the standard desolation. So you see I put the Kemper straight onto the Picatinny rail dust cover for the AEK. Okay. First of all, I have to reline the site. So I've just taken everything off. So I'm going to have to reline everything because I've just changed it. So again, press six and then nine. And in this case here, it didn't work. So if I press six again, it's lined itself up. Okay. So sometimes you may need to press six, then nine, and then six again to get it to work. Now, as I'm aiming down the side here, I'm going to fire a single shot. And you can see that the bullet hole was right there. My mouse didn't really move very far. Let me just change that to single fire. There we go. All right. There's the shot. So now I'm going to press number seven and horizontally, vertically move that down so that the sight is right on that bullet hole. Now, some of these sights are going to look a little odd when you do it this way, but at least you know. Now, whenever you fire, that shot is pretty much going to be on the mark. So sometimes when I'm making my videos, you're going to see the sights are a little bit weird. This will be why. And that just helps you out for when you're playing. The mod is still being worked on, remember this, and it's going to take time. So not everything's going to be perfect. You just have to find ways to work things around. So now. 
I could move that side out a little bit more if I wanted to, or I want it to be realistic, or, you know, if you're half blind like me, maybe you want to have the damn thing right there. Yes, this looks good. <laughs> Now I've just adjusted it to where I would like to have it, somewhere around about there. That way my cheek's going down to the uh, butt pad, butt stock, I should say. And now my shots are pretty much on site. All right, so for this part of the video, I'm we're gonna go over damage and maintenance of the guns, okay? So I've got three different Glocks in my hand right now. Generally, before the gun gets down to about 58% or 72% lubrication needed and 83% condition. All these guns were at good condition. Before it gets down to this point from a fresh gun, I've got about five magazines of ammunition. Now I've tested each one of these with the Glocks. It could be different with other guns. Or well, sorry, it will be different with other guns. But I've tested all different types of ammunition. So you see here, number one is FMJ. All right. JHP for the second gun. Third gun was AP. There's no difference between them. Not yet. I don't think that damage system is implemented where the different types of ammunition would do different levels of dust and stuff like that. Some guns, like sniper rifles, you'll only be able to fire maybe 10 rounds before you get down to this point here. Where you've still got to start looking at um, looking at maintaining your gun before it gets too bad. But in this case here, I fired five magazines. Okay, and there's 15 rounds per magazine. Okay. This one here, I fired uh, around about eight magazines. Okay. And I got it down to about 85%, 73%, so just on the yellow. And this one here, I fired 150 rounds. And I got it down to about 54% with the 100% dust level. That's down to about halfway. So if you were to continuous fire and continue continue firing, this is what your gun's going to look like out in the field. Now, to be able to counter that, you got your repair materials. Now, repair materials don't work the same way as they do in other games. Most of all these will just generally repair your condition of the gun, period. These ones here are considered lubrication. So these will clear out or lubricate your gun. These ones here, the progress clean, cleaning kits. They will clean the gun, so the name is, well, the name pretty much stands. Okay, and then these ones here, now, all these large repair kits, will repair your gun. Now, between all weapons, it doesn't matter what you use. So if you're going to repair the gun, you can repair any weapon in the game with the handgun repair kit. It'll give them 10% according to this, and they're all basically the same. They're all only going to give you about 10%. The best way to repair your guns is to go to a technician and pay the little bit of money. These things here would normally cost around about, what, upwards of about 10,000, 20,000 rubles to buy. But generally, if you've just got your gun down to about the, uh, normally before I repair, my gun's getting pretty close to, my games, it's pretty close to 70 odd percent. I'll go there and I'll go and pay for this gun. It'll be around about 4000 5000 to repair. A rifle, a little bit different pricing, but um, depending on the gun itself, it's going to end up being way cheaper. But it is advised to go through and just carry one of these with you. So just so that you know, you don't need to buy all of these different types and stuff like that. They all do still come with their different weight levels and stuff. Yeah? as you can see, and weight in Stalker plays a pretty big part. So I'm just going to bring, bring this in. I'm going to bring in a uh, Progress hand clean, Handgun Cleaning Kit, and I'll bring in several of these. Just so that you can see, there is a damage system on the guns as well. That's what these lines are. Okay, bring out gun number two. See, it's a little bit more profound damage to the gun. Bring out number three. It's really prevalent now. 
So you can see the condition of your gun as you're using it. Let's say I want to go through and repair. You don't just go to the use button anymore. What you've got to do is go to your specific gun that you wish to repair, right click it and go down towards maintenance. Okay. From here, you can do numerous things. So let's say I want to add some repair to the gun first. So I'm going to repair it once. And you see it's up to 91% now. But not exactly 10%, but you know, close enough. Or at least out in the field. Okay. Now once I've done that, you can see that the dust level is still there and the lubrication still needs attending to. Okay. So the second one that I would do, or in most cases if you're out in the field and you don't have a repair kit, first thing you would do is clean the gun. You can see here before 55. You see there it's now repaired, uh, gotten rid of all the dust level. But the lubrication level's gone down even further. So now I'm going to need to lubricate the gun. And I'll have to lubricate that twice if I want to bring it up to 100%. Didn't mean to do that. Maintenance. Lubricate the gun. Okay. Now, in desolation, just so that you know, before you level transfer, if you repair your gun, do this simple thing with all your weapons first. Okay, I do it generally after I've done the gun and I've lubricated it, what have you, or I've gone and see the technician. Go through, right click the gun, and unload the gun. Bring it out and just reload it. I'm just going to call this a save state. So, with desolation, there's always going to be a stutter whenever you reload the gun. When you first start an area, that's why I'm trying to defeat that with this build. But over time, it gets a little bit worse. You won't notice it. But as you progressively go through and your gun takes further damage, you're going to start stuttering when you're reloading the gun. Basically, that's the save state. It's saving all the stats that are on the gun so that you can progress to the next area if, if that's what's happening at the time. Okay? So make sure whenever you've done any work to your gun, make sure you at least unload it, or in my case, since I'm not running magazines, fire a shot and reload. If you want to do it quickly, or if you've got magazines active, just simply press the R button and reload and put in a fresh magazine. To further weapon maintenance, I've gone through and I've fired the third gun a fair few times more. <laughs> a lot of jams. Just to demonstrate this, so you still see the max condition is at 88, okay? Just to demonstrate a few things. Now, if I was to pull this gun out here and grab the multi-tool and put it over there and go to dis dis disassemble the gun, it's not going to work. It's not active with this mod at the moment. Generally, your guns will degrade over time and there's nothing you can do about that, okay? Generally, it means once your max condition's gone down to a certain level, you can't do anything about it. You have to go and purchase a new weapon or be lucky enough to pick up one that's better than the one you've got. Okay, depending on what loot system that you're running. So let's say I went through and I go down towards man gun. So we're here at man gun. I go through. I go to repair the gun. I get him to repair it. It's going to cost me 11000 at its current condition. I go through and say yes. Okay. And you see the max condition has brought it up to 88%. You see that a lot of the damage that was on the gun is no longer there. It looks almost clean. Again. Now, just to reiterate that, put some rounds in this. Okay. Now, if I was to go through and take out this barrel, right, and put in a new barrel. It's not going to do anything. Its overall max condition is good, but the over sorry, the overall condition is good, but the max condition is still 88. That 88 represents the condition of the overall gun itself. And there's not really a great deal that you can do about repairing that. Let's say I go through 
And I'll just give this another hit with the cleaner. I'll go through and I'll give this two hits with the lubrication. Okay. Now that gun is good. Let's say I go through and repair with my own gun. Hit. It's not going to do anything. Okay. So just know that taking care of your gun is probably the biggest thing you can do, but it is still the beta. Okay. So looking after your gun truly means with this mod, your gun will look after you. If there are other ways of repairing it, I'm not aware of it or getting it back its its original max condition. But what I understand right now, your max condition will always go down. All you're doing is trying to beat time. So generally in a playthrough, it's probably advised to just spend that little bit of money to have multiple uh, copies or multiple um, weapons of the weapons you like. All right, this section is to help you put together your gun. Okay. I'm going to bring in some demonstrations of weapons. So I'm going to grab the MP153 for the AEK. I'm going to bring in that Glock. All right. Let me just rearrange these guns. You've already seen the Glock. It's a fresh Glock. MP153. And the AEK. <clears throat> First gun. Going to grab parts for it. And that'll be the Glock. Now, if I go to find the Glock, I usually find it by the list here. Okay. For those of you who know silhouettes pretty easy, then you're going to come across these things. I'm going to utilize this for the Glock because there's some parts I don't know the name of in here. I haven't really spent the time to find it. So we go here and we can see that the Glock has three barrels that can be put into it. This one is a different color one. Actually, I'll just bring them all in so I can show you. Okay. You see there, that's got like a different color to it. So if I was to pull this barrel out of here, which is the standard barrel, I'll put this colored barrel in there. You see now, if I bring the sun, if the clouds aren't going overhead, see it sort of brings a uh, different color to the ejection port of the gun. looks a little bit different a little bit more flashier if you like that type of thing but in this case here you can see that there's no thread on the outside you can't put a silencer on the gun or anything else like that so if i pull out that barrel and i put in this one here which was the long barrel or upgraded barrel i put that in there you can now see that there's a thread there but I can actually put a silencer on this gun. All right, let's go through and grab the other parts of the gun. Like I said, I don't know uh, the actual name of the gun, so I'm actually going to use the silhouettes for it, okay? So here, I've got two different silencers for the weapon. In the case of the Glock, there's a certain silencer that you want to use for that Glock, and I'll show you that. Now, with most pistols, the only thing you can really put on there is a universal bracket. Now, how I find the universal bracket is I look for these two things here. The mount 45 degrees left and the mount 45 degrees right. Pretty easy sort of silhouette to find. Right next to it to the right is a universal bracket. Even if you put the other two mods on there, the DUS and the RDAP, you'll still find these three together. But they'll be somewhere else in the list. Okay? So I'm going to grab the universal bracket. I'm going to grab a light. This one's the easiest to find. It's right down the bottom. Grab a light for it. 
then I'm going to grab a site. And I like to use the Trigicon. It has a Cobra site on there, and I love the Cobra site. For reference, that's the... Sorry, that's not the thing, eh? <laughs> that's the Cobra site there. That's the... Will you? Oh, yeah, the OKP. The funny-looking one. All right. Now, in the case of silencers for this particular gun, this is the standard silencer. If I was to put that on the gun, aim down sights, you can see that the silencer itself has blurred out the, the iron sights for the weapon. Okay? Sometimes you need to keep an eye out for those things. Let's take the silencer off, and I'm going to put on the inverted or the offset silencer. Not inverted. <laughs> you see now, I can sort of see the sights a little bit clearer. Even though the silencer itself is still blocking it, it's a little bit cleaner. All right. Now I'm going to put on the universal bracket. And you can see here, I've got eight slots up top. And I've got two slots down the bottom. Now you can put a laser on there, or you can put a light on the, down the bottom there. But when you're putting it on, you need to just keep an eye out for a few things. So let's put, grab the torch. And I'll put it on the gun itself. And you see it comes up with two options. What we're looking for is the picker two. So that's down the bottom. And you see here, sometimes it doesn't show on the gun properly. But that's still work in progress. But if I was to grab, go outside in debug mode and have a look, you see it's come up pretty well. Some amazing work by the team. It really is amazing work. Now if I grab the site, I can put that on top. And you see now it's on top of the gun. Because it's eight, you could actually put a much larger site on there. But you just got to keep an eye out for how many slots it takes. Most of these sites will tell you. But if you use the other two mods, some sites on there won't tell you how big they are or how large they are. It just comes down to trial and error. So usually just save before you go buying a part if you're going to do a legit run. Or if you're debugging in all of your gear to have fun, just got to keep an eye out for it. Just play around till you find the one that you like. But in most cases here, with the standard desolation, they're going to tell you straight up. This one here, length of sight mount, four divisions. Magnification, one times. Just to reiterate quickly, go through, and I'm going to press six, and then nine. Okay, and it's activated the sight. That's not the proper site though, okay? So if that happens, all you need to do is just right-click again, all right, and then right-click again. And now I've got the Cobra site, which is the site I like. We go through and line it up, because like I said, most of these are out of whack. Around about there. Now, should be spot on. Then if I wanted to, I can move this out a little bit more. Now the MP153, the reason why I grabbed that is because over here by the list, you will not find an MP153. All right, so if I go down to M and look through here, you will not see an MP153. Okay. However, if you take away the MP and just go with for the 153, there is a 153 up the top here where all the numbers are. Here it is, the MP153 selection. I'm not going to go about modding this weapon out too much, but I'll grab some of the parts that are here. Upgraded barrel, grip, buffer, mag. And let's grab a random M4 stock, that one there. All right, let's pull apart all the parts of the gun. You see here, there's the gun. 
Everything's been pulled off. All right, so let's grab that upgraded barrel and chuck that on first. See, it's got a longer barrel on there now with a thread on the end. Go through and grab the um, buffer. So here, see here, this is the handle. And that accepts a buffer tube. So the most common thing that people come across is they don't know where the buffer tube is. If you go by the list and you go down to AR15, you're going to find this section here. It's the easiest way to find it. AR15 buffer. Click on that. And you'll now have a buffer tube for the gun. Okay. Just there. If I grab that stock that I picked up, the SR25 stock, put that on. Bang. You now put AR15 stocks onto the gun. Each stock has different variable stats for ergonomics or stability or what have you. So you can go through and find those and have fun with that. Now, I'm going to go through and put the plus four magazine on there. I'm going to put this tactical handguard on there. All right. And then I'm going to put this barrel cover for the MP153. And you see you've got a large selection of Picatinny slots there and where you want to put your particular sights. You've also got a left and underneath one. That's for a handle. And there's the other side. Now that's the MP153. Just give me a second. I'm going to put these guns away and we're going to go to the AEK. Okay, the AEK. Now this AEK has already got a couple of components on it. I'm going to pull apart everything. So that I'm down to the base gun. Just so I don't go confusing myself. I'm going to go through and just chuck these parts off the edge. And let a Rostock. All right, now we can go through and find the parts. Now there is a section for the AEK. It's up top here more. Here we go. Here's all the parts for the AEK. Now the AEK is a specific gun, so you need to grab specific components. Um, I think RDAP or DUS, I only say both at the same time because I'm unsure as to which is which sometimes. Sometimes they've got them all named and sometimes they don't. But I am running a particular mod that I always run called the Rail Riser. It's a very simple little mod and adds some very, very good uh, components that are very good if you want to, if you just want to modify base desolation. All right. So I'm going to grab the barrel because there's only one of those. This is the handguard. Grip. This here is the barrel cover. I'm going to call it the barrel cover. It's probably not what it is. I think it's a gas tube on an AK. This is the cover. This is a Picatinny rail cover. I'm going to grab both the muzzle and the silencer here. And I'm going to grab the stock buffer tube. Okay. That's all the parts that I can grab here. And what else am I'm going to grab as well is I'm going to grab myself a stock, the heavy stock. I like this stock. But if you wanted to, you want to go flash like I did in my previous video. I went with this one here. Okay. Now, I'm going to need a 45 degree angle for this particular build just to show you how I got all the parts. Okay. And then I'm going to need a rail riser component. So if you have a look up here, you've got two, two similar ones to the left and right. This one here is the left side. This one here is the right side. These are the extensions. Okay. I'm going to grab. This assault handle here. 
If I go down more, if it lets me. All right, I'm going to grab a light. Now, there are other lasers here, and these are the lasers here. You can grab a red, a green, or a blue. However, in my case here, I've grabbed this one here, the tactical AN laser. Um, and I think that was, oh no, the sights. So again, I'm going to grab the ACOG and I'm going to grab the Kemper, okay, which is this one here. Now I'm going to go start putting this gun together. All right, so first of all, barrel. When you're going through, you need to put these guns together in a certain way. Otherwise, the game won't let you put certain components or parts on. So I'm going to grab the specific buffer tube for the AEK and put that on. And let's just have a look at it. Next, I'm going to put on the, the handle down the bottom or the handguard. This is the Picatinny gas tube cover. All right, and this is the dust cover, 18 divisions on it. And as well as that, I'm going to put the stock on. You see the gun components are there. Now, just so that you're mindful, in case you're not aware, I'm running the game in DirectX 11, which allows me to see this picture. If you run it in DirectX 10, you won't see this. You'll see a gun that's off to the side, and you'll have to do everything by touch and feel or knowledge when you're putting your gun back together. It won't actually show you. All right? Now, what I'm going to do now is grab a 45-degree angle. No, I'm not. Sorry. I'm going to grab the ACOG first. I'm going to put that on the gun. I'm going to put it on the dust cover. I'm going to put it right up towards me, which is zero. So zero is closest to you. Nine is away from you, okay? So if I was to put on the nine, you'll see that it's almost right at the end of the Picatinny rail. Yeah? So let's pull that off and put that closest towards me. I'm going to grab the 45-degree angle mount, and I'm going to put that on the dust cover just after the side itself, okay? And you see it's sitting there. Now I'm going to put the rail extension on because the Kemper site takes eight divisions. The 45 degree only allows you four divisions. Okay, so I'm going to put the rail extender on to the 45 degree mount and attach that. And you can see here if I turn this gun around, you see it's extended it. This is why I use that particular mod. It just makes things a little bit better and a little bit uh, cooler. If you use the other two mods, you're going to have way more access to a lot more stuff. But it's going to be very technical, and it may be a little bit harder for people who may just come in to the game. Okay? Now, just so that you remember, I'm going to press 6 and then 9, and it's now lined up the site. Now I can press 9 to switch between the two sites. Let's say I want to keep it there, even though this site doesn't work, as I've demonstrated. But I'm going to change this one. I'm going to move this out a little bit more. So it's just a little bit cleaner when I flip between the two. All right, they're all lined up. So let's move on to the next components. I'm going to put a silencer on this AEK. You see the silencer is now there. I'm going to put this laser onto the gas tube cover. All right. I'm going to put that around about the five. And you see there, looks pretty clean. It's not going to happen with this gun. However, sometimes when you're putting your components on the gun, the order is kind of crucial. I'm running a stealth mod in my game. So when I activate my components, which is the Z button, um, you want to make sure that you're not going to activate your torch by accident. So it's imperative that you keep an eye out for what side of the gun that you're putting this mod on. So this is the left-hand side, and that's the right-hand side there. Okay? So let's say I put this onto the left, because it doesn't really matter in this case. 
I put this onto the left hand side of the gun. All right. The top part of the gun is still considered number one on this particular gun. And then number two, if I press Z again, it's going to be the flashlight. And if I press Z again, it's going to get rid of the laser and then it's going to get rid of the light. So that Z basically follows a sequential order for how you activate your particular attachments of the gun itself. All right, and it all depends on what you want to do with your particular parts and components. I don't really like seeing the torch there. Just down to a preferential thing. If I go down and find where the torch is there, I might put it on the right hand side. So it's out of the way. It's on there. But sometimes that order can be crucial. So let's say I take that top end laser off here. And I go down <coughs> and I grab this laser here. Yeah. Now I'm going to go through and put that laser on the left hand side of the gun. And you'll see that it's still following that order of activation. Let's say I go through and I take those two off and I put the torch on the left hand side and then I put the laser on the right hand side. Now, torch turns on first and then the laser. So until such a time that maybe they add in some, the devs add in some keys for separate attachment parts according to the left or right side of the gun. Don't imagine that would happen because there's some components that have just too many Picatinny slots on the left and right. But right now, as you can see, it just follows a sequential order. Now, sometimes that laser can be a little bit off. Or in this case, it can be right on. But if I was to fire that one round, you see that the laser is pretty much spot on. Almost. Anyway, this is the AAK that I'm running at the moment. <coughs> uh, probably going to change up the guns again. but um, And then I'm going to release these little videos, just little ones to help you put the guns together. But I think I've covered pretty much everything to help you out to get started. Um, yeah, 